Hi everybody, I am Jarrett Ross, the Genie Vlogger, and I am here today with Deborah Long. She is a real estate teacher, a genealogist. She is the founder of the Triangle Jewish Genealogy Society. She also serves as one of the directors. She is the daughter of two Holocaust survivors, and she has been searching for the fragments of her family ever since she was 10. So I'm going to hand it over to Debbie. She's going to be talking about specific ways that you can search for your family members if your family also survived the Holocaust. So. Well, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people come to genealogy with different purposes in mind. And for me, it was always to solve the puzzle of what happened to my family. Uh, my parents were typical of Holocaust survivors. They didn't talk much about what had happened, but we knew that there were ghosts in our families, that there were absences. Uh, we had only one grandmother. We had no cousins. Uh, and it was a very sensitive subject at home to ask my mother or father about siblings or cousins because you don't want to pile on uh, some of the suffering by asking them. But we knew that there was something unusual about our family and the fact that we were named after people who had been murdered. We had been somehow subtly relate to us. We know that Jewish people tend to name their children after uh, grandparents or other people that had gone before them, but, but even among my parents' friends, all of their children also, the names had some significance. And I knew that I was named after my grandmother who had died at Auschwitz, and that my sister was named after my mother's beloved uh, brother, but we didn't know too much. And of course, by the time you start to ask the really significant questions, sometimes the key players are gone, yeah. right? But in, in this particular case, my mother um, had always been meticulous about leaving, shall we say, breadcrumbs um, ever since she left Europe. After the end of World War II, my parents were uh, in uh, German displaced persons camp. My mother met my father. She married, so her name changed. And then, of course, they came to the United States in July of 46, so now she's across the ocean. But she always tried to leave messages, as it were, through attorneys she hired, through the Red Cross, um, and through other organizations that in case any of her uh, six brothers or sisters had survived, they would be able to find her. And uh, when I was 10 years old and started to understand a little bit more about what had happened to my mother's family, I started to write the letters for my mother to the Red Cross. I mean, these were back in the day, well before your day. You were actually handwriting letters to the International Red Cross, which largely went unanswered for about 50 years. And then, of course, with the Internet, everything started to change. Not only was there information online, but it was now also possible to use a tool called Google Translate. So if you did get a response from, let's say, the German government or the Polish government, I didn't have to wait weeks to have one of my mother's friends translate it or to go and pay for translation. Now I could start to make sense of this myself. And of course, around uh, 2008, ironically, after my mother passed away, we started, my sister and I started to receive emails from the International Tracing Service. And I would suggest to anybody who is looking for the fate of their family members in the Holocaust to go first to the International Tracing Service organization where you can fill out online forms. It doesn't cost you any money. You might have to wait three months to six months to get an answer, but you will get an incredibly comprehensive answer from this organization in Germany, which has been for decades going through all of these very elaborate records of people who died in the concentration camps, people who survived concentration camps, just, just an incredible amount of documentation. I received cards that showed that my father had been in Buchenwald, that he had been in Flossenburg, that he had been in a hospital in a part of Germany after the war. And I uh, was able to obtain similar records from my mother. So over a period of time with these records, records coming from the International Tracing Service, I was able to establish a timeline of what had happened to them in the war. And of course, I was also able to find out what happened to some of their family members as well. The next place that I would go would be the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. And when I say go, I mean literally go there. If you can, if you don't live too far away, it is certainly worth a visit because not only does the museum done a remarkable job of creating a learning environment for people who don't know about the Holocaust, but on the fifth floor 
of the museum itself is an incredible library, as well as a photographic archives. I was able to find pictures from the Ludge Ghetto, which I didn't even know exist. I, I knew about the ghetto, I didn't know about the photographs. And in those photographs, I was actually able to find a picture of, I believe, I won't ever be 100% sure, my mother's brother and my mother's father. And in addition, uh, on the fourth floor of the Holocaust Museum, there is a survivor registry. And the people who are staffing that place are remarkably literate in numerous languages. So not only can they tell you if somebody has registered as a survivor, they also have records that have to do with the fate of people who were in the extermination camps and the concentration camps. And the staff people will also explain what these forms are. Uh, again, they're written often in German or some other language. So uh, that is a great place to go. If you can't go there in person, you can also go to the Holocaust Museum's website, ushmm.org, and click on a couple of tabs under research and be able to fill out online forms requesting information. So those are two of the most prominent um, uh, and easy to access uh, places to go if you think you have family that might have perished in the Holocaust or survived. Now, where is the museum located? That's in Washington, D.C. It's on the National Mall. Very easy to get to. You, you can drive there or fly to Washington and take a train that will let you off virtually two blocks away from the museum. So it's a great location. But I would also contact Yad Vashem. And you can do this again online or you can go to the museum itself. It's in Jerusalem. And Yad Vashem is the world's largest Holocaust museum. And the museum in and of itself is incredible. The archives I spend days in, literally days in, because even though a lot of their information is now also online, there are things you can only get by going there in person. For example, there may be some testimonies that were given by people who survived the Holocaust where they discuss what happened to them, what happened to their families. And even if you don't know what happened specifically to your family, if you know the town they were from, you can look at the name of the town and find somebody who might have survived whatever happened in that town and listen to their testimony. Another resource I would go to would be the Shoah Testimony Depository, which is held by the University of Southern California. There's a Shoah Foundation. It was started by Steven Spielberg after really? he did Shoah, and he was very generous. He gave millions of dollars to train interviewers, uh, just ordinary people like you and me, who were talking to the survivors in their communities. Now those testimonies are online. They are accessible. You can actually go to the show uh, foundation and again look at the person's name or you can look up a town and see uh, what testimonies are available in the language which you understand and then go to a local university for me it's the university of north carolina chapel hill go heels i found so much information about what happened to my family that i felt compelled to go back to poland and to hungary because i couldn't believe in spite of what everybody was telling me there was there was actually quite a bit left. And I think one of the reasons that I pursued this obsessively is I feel that one of the things the Nazis did was to deliberately strip people of their humanity. And one of the ways that that was done was to take away their names and to give them numbers. And I feel that the work that I am doing and the work that other people are doing is to give those people back their names. And the best thing about this research was that I discovered that, um, again, sadly and ironically, um, my mother never found this out and my father passed away many years ago. I found living cousins, other people on the other side of the ocean who also had survived. They didn't know that my family had survived. We didn't know about them. But by reconstructing this family tree, I was uh, able to, in 2010, find some of my mother's cousins who had um, been also in Poland, like my mother was, had survived Bergen-Belsen and had gone to Sweden. And when I first realized I had cousins in Sweden, I said, this is like a Mel Brooks movie, you know, Jews in <laughs> outer space, Jews and Sweden. And I found out that there were a significant, there were thousands of Jews after the war that went to Sweden. I found out what happened to my father's Hungarian cousins. And because uh, many Europeans don't move the way that Americans do, that these cousins were largely discoverable because they had moved into the house that had belonged to their father who had received it from his father. So once we found out what happened to the 
patriarch of the family, we just went to that address and there were those cousins of mine. <laughs> it's bittersweet joy because I wish my parents were here to see what I had found. But um, I would caution anybody who goes into looking for family that has been struck by enormous tragedy like this. I think African Americans and the slave experience would be something very similar. Um, I would remind you that not only will there be terrible moments of sadness in the research that you do, but there will be tremendous moments of absolute and utter, um, unexpressible joy, you know, at what you yeah. find out. It's very healing. Yes, it is. Thank you so much for talking with us today, mm -hmm. Debbie. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it the thumbs up. You can also click right about here if you'd like to subscribe. You can also follow me at Genie Vlogger on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. You can also find out more about the Triangle Jewish Genealogy Society by going to the Facebook for them. Uh, do we have any other social media? Uh, well, we have our website itself, trianglejgs.org. Yes, and we will be linking all of that as well as any websites that we talked about in this video. Um, thank you guys so much. I'm the Genie Vlogger. This is Debbie Long. We're out.